thank you for joining me in this nugget as we focus on managing Office 365 security alerts. Alerting an administrator of any potential violation of security policies within your organization is a good measure in ensuring that you quickly react to any threat within your organization. The constant need for security professionals to remain vigilant is aided by security alerts. And from here, you can actually see from this snippet that we have different types of alerts that are listed over here and we have severity levels. Now, this is very important because in certain organizations, though you may actually need to react each and every time you have an alert, the certain alerts are not as serious as others. For instance, a potentially malicious URL that is clicked within your organization may simply be ranked as a very high risk alert, whereas the creation of a forwarding or redirect rule would simply be regarded as having a low severity. Now, this simply depends from one organization to the other and the severity levels would simply vary. However, it is very important when creating policies to ensure that your severity levels rightly represent the kind of alert you would like to have in case of a violation for that particular policy. Certain policies could simply be default and generated by the system, hence a system over here. However, we can also create custom policies that actually address specific threats within our environment, such as data loss prevention or downloading of large quantities of files or accessing certain files from certain locations, etc. And each and every time these policies are violated, an alert is triggered indicating the severity of that particular policy violation. So from the alerts dashboard, we'll be able to see training activities from various alerts, including their categories, whether those alerts are generated due to a threat management related policies or is simply related to some permissions that are being violated, etc. And all this information becomes very helpful, including the dates modified. Now, this can be very great if you're working in a security operation center where you actually assign different alerts alert violation to be investigated by different people. So you could simply look at maybe the tier one looking at low level policies, the tier two looking at the medium or high in that order. And all this information can be very helpful in helping your team to rightly respond to the different alerts that you may have within your environment. Well, let's jump into Office 365 and look at how we can make use of these features. So here we are within the Office 365 security and compliance section. And to the left hand side, we have alerts. So we have the trending alerts over here showing us on which dates we had activity, etc. And if we move to the right hand side we also can see the activity alerts by severity this is quite interesting however over here we can only see the green bar indicating a medium severity if we had seen anything in red that would actually indicate a very high severity and anything that is blue I don't know what color that is will actually indicate a low severity now you also can see the different categories over here this should have been data loss threat management information governance etc and over here we can see that the bar that we have for that active alert is actually pertaining to threat management and if you want to actually go into that and begin looking at what we can do further to ensure that that alert is taken care of, we would actually come to this section over here. So we have the recent alerts and here we can click on any of these alerts and be able to have an understanding of what exactly is happening, the time on which that particular alert occurred, the details, etc., including the user who's actually associated with that particular alert. And we can see the status of this particular alert. And if we want to have insight into the policy that was actually triggered, we can actually click on that policy and review more information. However, if this is something that we already understand and we have already mitigated it within our environment, we'll simply go ahead and click on the resolve button. And over here, we can decide what exactly is the state. Has this been investigated or we're still investigating it? Has it been resolved or should we just dismiss it? And if you're happy with this, having the status of resolved, we'll click on resolved put a few comments over there and click on save. So this alert will change from being an active alert to a resolved one. And we could simply go ahead and do the same to other alerts that we have within your environment. And as we resolve them, or as we wait for results from an investigation, we could simply put it under investigating, click on save, etc. This will simply help us to have a consistent understanding of what exactly is happening to the various alerts that are triggered within our environment. Furthermore, we can click on view or alerts to view the rest of the alerts or other types of alerts such as activity alerts, restricted users, and even manage advanced alerts. A task that will demonstrate in the next nugget. To create a new alert policy, we'll click on new alert policy over here. So from here, we can name our alerts, categorize them and choose severity level. So I'll simply go ahead and give this a name as DLP policy. And from there, we'll go ahead and give a description if we needed to. And importantly, we have to specify what the severity level is for this particular policy. Now, I cannot emphasize this enough. Anything that is actually going to impact your organization negatively to an extent whereby you cannot run things smoothly should always be rated with a high severity. Now, this is very important as it will help you to promptly respond to these alerts and ensure that you put in mitigative measures that will stop that particular threat from exploiting your resources. All right. Thereafter, we'll have to categorize this. This is definitely going to fall under the data loss prevention. And we can go ahead and click on next. 
And after that, we have to specify what activity triggers this alert. So this should be triggered. Let's quickly scroll down and look for DLP policy match. There are other activities that you can select from, such as accessed files or checked out files, you have moved files, etc. And all these can also be used to simply specify what exactly is happening within your environment when that particular alert is triggered. The section below simply allows us to specify how we would like these alerts to be triggered. Now, it is very important to always remember that you would like to react the very moment an alert is triggered. So over here, we can always say every time an activity that matches that rule is actually matched, then that alert should actually be triggered. But if you want to create a threshold indicating how many times that activity should carry on before an alert is triggered, you can always adjust the number of times over here and the time it should take before an alert is triggered. However, the dark side of that is that if somebody is trying to access an account by guessing passwords, for example, they may actually try three, four, five times. And if they manage to get in on the 10th time when you have set your activities to spend over 15 times, that person will actually have access and you will not be actually alerted. And as a result, they'll be able to go ahead and compromise the different resources in your environment without your knowledge. But if you have with that you can proceed and click on the next button and over here you can also specify who should actually be notified maybe a number of administrators within your environment could simply receive emails notifying them of this kind of activity and you can always specify those contacts or those email addresses rather over here in addition how many notifications would you like to have in a day is it one is it five or should there be no limit you simply set that to no limit for you to be notified each and every time there's an activity matching that policy click on the next button and have a preview of the configuration that you've already set in the meantime and if you're happy with what you're seeing you simply go ahead and click on the finish button we can also view or edit the alert policies we've created in case we needed to change something so from this end over here we can go on that dlp policy and make any changes by going to the edit button we can also manage advanced alerts by going to policies for cloud applications we can go to the manage advanced alerts where we can actually have more information regarding alerts that can be triggered within the cloud application security section in this nugget we've looked at how we can create alert policies and the different severity levels that we must put into consideration each and every time we are creating these policies, as well as how we can manage the alerts by changing the alert status based on what we are doing, whether we are investigating or the alert has been resolved or dismissed. For now, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.